Austrian economic investor returns 4,000%. So I saw this article on Yahoo Finance last week entitled Black Swan Investor is Watching for Greatest Credit Bubble to Pop. And I know who this Black Swan Investor is. In fact, he's a mentor of mine. And I thought, what a great opportunity to do an educational video for you guys. And in just a second, I'll share who this Black Swan Investor is, his background, and why you want to pay attention. So this black swan investor is none other than Mark Spitznagel. And in this article, it says right now, the Universa Investments founder, whose fund aims to protect clients during black swan events, says the financial system is most vulnerable to the greatest credit bubble of human history. If this credit bubble ever pops, it's going to be the most catastrophic market failure that anyone has ever read about. But let's hope that doesn't happen. So when Mark Spitznagel says this, you need to pay attention. So who is Mark Spitznagel? Well, you've probably heard of this book, Safe Haven, Investing for Financial Storms by Mark Spitznagel. Now, this book is quite heavy. And if you're either new to Austrian economics or new to investing, probably wouldn't recommend reading this one uh, off the bat. However, The Dow of Capital, Austrian Investing in a Distorted World by Mark Spitznagel is a great book to begin with. And so who is Mark Spitznagel? Well, he's a hedge fund manager and an Austrian economist. He uses Austrian economics in the investment world. And why should you pay attention to him? Well, the guy returned a 4,000% return in quarter one of 2020. Now, it's not just that. That's not the only reason why you should pay attention to what Mark Spitznagel has to say. In this blog, The Dow of Mark Spitznagel, it talks about his 4,000% return in that first quarter. But scroll down to the bottom there. In the 11 years since the inception of Universa, his hedge fund, the life-to-date average annual return is 105%. 105%. That smashes everyone out of the ballpark. Everyone. Buffett. Um, Joel Greenblatt, who is one of my favorite all-time investors. So what gives Mark Spitznagel that edge? It's Austrian economics. So who is Mark Spitznagel? Well, as I said, he's a hedge fund manager, founder, president, and CIO of Universo Investments, uh, which was founded in 2007. And through ancient Chinese Taoist concepts and Austrian investing techniques, he's defined his investing approach by taking the road less traveled, or as he would simply say, following a roundabout path. The Austrian way of thinking, by accepting initial losses and setbacks to make progress in the distant future, the roundabout path can be applied to business, economics, and investing. Patience and the understanding that the market is a process provide a framework for Austrian investing, achieving balance and allowing systems to self-regulate when those systems become, uh, become unstable to another pillar of the Austrian school of thought. You can already begin to see how the Austrian way of thinking might have a problem with intervention in markets and the economy by such forces as the Fed and central banks. They're a strong believer that the distorted world created by the Fed is unstable and will lead to a historic global financial bubble. Instant gratification and market imbalances. One of the arguments the Austrian school presents is that the need for instant gratification produces imbalances in markets and our economy. So we're talking about both the uh, Austrian business cycle theory, but also uh, Eugene von Bombarwerk's uh, work, Capital and Interest, or Time Preference. Um, Bombarwerk, uh, many say, in fact, I think uh, Ludwig von Mises even says that uh, uh, he is the greatest uh, Austrian. 
Um, I think it was, uh, uh, trying to think of his name, it says that Carl Menger never had any, any teachers, meaning, you know, there, there was no one before Menger. Uh, and Bombava came after Menger. Uh, he was an Austrian minister of finance as well. But his work on time preference, capital and, and interest, and also his attacks on Marx were just awesome. Uh, elected officials focused on the near term will favor distorting markets if there's an immediate benefit and the long run effects will be di dismissed. Often human nature reverts toward easing the immediate pain of any economic crisis without evaluating or even considering repercussions or long term effects. Spitznagel argues through his Austrian based way of thinking that this is when you want to avoid markets because of the instability created by artificial forces and uh, that name just came to me joseph schumpeter joseph schumpeter the, the other great ec economist so what do we learn about using austrian economics as a way to invest in, uh, to way a, a way to invest uh in the dow of capital well i'll come back towards the end of this video and give you guys some other resources uh that you can use uh, to start using Austrian economics as your baseline, uh, as your foundation for sound investing. Uh, and also I'll share a couple of videos where I've already talked about this and given you guys some uh, education on this. But let's uh, cut to a clip right now and hear from Mark himself. You're always looking for a storm and also trying to hedge risk. Where are we and what kind of risk are you trying to hedge? Where are we? Uh, you know, it's, we're in the, the middle of a massive boom-bust cycle. And we've been here for a while. Um, I, there's no telling when we're going to get out of this. Uh, we know the bigger the boom, the bigger the bust. You know, we, we, learn this, uh, we learn this from his, history. But, of course, what we also learn from history is that we don't learn from history. And this is why these boom-bust cycles uh, persist like this. So, of course, then the question becomes, and, and, and to excuse the sort of baseball analogy, it's like, what inning are we really in? Mm -hmm. And as an investor, when you're starting to think about mitigating risk, right, you had this incredible quarter in the middle of a, a true crisis. I assume it becomes harder when you don't think a crisis is at hand, at least in, right in front of you. Yeah, well, I don't need to time these things. I can remain agnostic about it. I need to as risk mitigation. We go into extra innings. It can go on forever, right? Um, I don't think it can go on forever. You need to act as if it can. But uh, you know, my, the, my point is, in my book is that risk mitigation is something that you should be agnostic. Agnostic. It shouldn't. It, it shouldn't be tactical. It should be strategic. That's really important. It shouldn't require a crystal ball. Um, one of the things that people are thinking about using as a risk mitigation for inflation uh, is crypto and Bitcoin. Uh, we were talking uh, before before we came on just about the number of people here at this very conference that are fascinated by crypto. Uh, you know, the guys in suits, sneakers. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is your What's your take on crypto right now? I think the thinking behind crypto is, is, is good. I think that people are thinking about the problems of monetary interventionism, the problems of, our, of the risks to our banking system. I, mean, I think that's underlying a lot of this. The problem is I feel like we, we've kind of killed the golden goose with speculation behind it. I mean, people think of crypto as sort of an antidote to these things that I'm talking about, the systemic risk. Um, or the speculative nature of, of, the, of, of the market. But I think what it really is, is, is more of a symptom. I think they've got right. that, that wrong. I think it's, it's, it's because we're in this credit boom that we're seeing something like this. There's too much liquidity out there. It needs to find assets. Crypto is one of those. But I, I guess then the question is right now, do you, do you, I mean, if you believe that the, we're still in this, this massive boom cycle mm -hmm. with, with, without a bust in sight, mm -hmm. does that mean you're just massively long or not? And how do you think about that tail risk, which is what your firm is famous for? Mm -hmm. So this notion of being long or short, that, that means you have to time it. But risk mitigation doesn't have to be that way. Risk, risk mitigation doesn't have to be, do I think the market's going up and down? You know, we can think of risk mitigation um, like, uh, like a driver driving slower, and you get around the track slower. So it, it hurts your returns. Or you can think about it as doing something that allows you to drive fast, like a pit stop in racing. It allows right. you to actually drive faster. Um, but this isn't the way modern finance works. Modern finance says that you need to take more risk to get more return, and as you take less risk, you get less return. As long as you're getting that ratio right, risk-adjusted returns go up. But I think this is the whole problem now. I think it's a massive dilemma that investors face. 
So let me just cut to another clip of Mark Spitznagel on Bloomberg, where he gives a dire warning about what we're about to face. But also you'll pick up a hint on one of the strategies or tools that he uses in his portfolio. Is what we're seeing now in the equity market, or at least since November, uh, enough of a drawdown, a sharp enough drawdown for the universal strategy to be making money for your clients? I, I mean, as always, I just can't talk about that. Um, uh... Well, I don't expect you to talk about percentages, but what I am talking about is the degree of the drawdown, and more importantly, the and here, what we're seeing here, of course, are the drawdowns that we've had since the great financial crisis of 2008. And there have been a few. This is a log chart, helps to perhaps illustrate it sure. a bit better for people. Um, and of course, the pandemic meltdown of 2020 was a huge moneymaker for your clients. Mm -hmm. As I say, what I'm getting at is, is there enough of a drawdown? Is there enough volatility for the strategies that you employ to be working in your client's favor right now? Well, I mean, I'll just say, if you look at that chart, yeah, this, it's hard to find last month on there. So the mar <laughs> markets move a lot more than, than last month. Uh, you know, the, 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 the types of risks um, from, of, that we saw last month, those types of moves, those aren't the kind of things that are really important. Those aren't the things that are consequential um, mm. to one's rate of compounding over time. Well, what, I mean, what levels then do you uh, kick in? I mean, if I buy flood insurance, I know that if my house is destroyed by a flood that's when it kicks in right where is your flood level I mean, it's never that simplistic. So, I, you know, it, this isn't a structured product or something like that. It has to do with uh, pricing in the market, different ways that we position things. So it's never that straightforward. Now, there are people out there, Mark, who want to do what you do. Um, they think they can do it on their own, right? They um, mess around in the options market. And Nassim Taleb said in the forward to your book, and, and we can show people a cover of Mark's book, Safe Haven, that your edge comes from being a former pit trader with an intuitive understanding of mathematics. How do you decide uh, when we are in the middle of a volatility spike, when to sell or exercise the option? the options that, that you buy and sell to, to, to crystallize gains on behalf of your clients. How do you know? So this is something that we've just highly systematized over the years. And, and really, that's a great question because it's the primary reason why people should not try to do this themselves. I think I make that point very strongly in my book. That the, don't, someone do this, should, don't try this at someone home. Someone should never try, try this at home because you could even get the trade right and it'll slip through your fingers. So that's, uh, that, that's a good point. But it's something, you know, this is really where the ex a lot of the expertise comes in. And, well, and you have mainly experts um, investing with you, right? This is not something that a retail investor um, can get involved with. They typically go for a 60-40 portfolio. That's been the traditional way to kind of guard yourself um, from market drops. How do you feel about that strategy? Because many people don't have the choice to get into optionality in order to protect themselves. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, um, so it's true. Ours is an institutional, largely institutional product. Um, and, and when people, it's obvious that when people try this, you know, it's, it's really hard to get this right type of explosive payoffs, explosive protection that we do. So yeah, and so people are forced to look at, as you say, 60-40 or diversifying, diversifying type strategies, the risk parities of the world. Diversifying. Do, well, like that's because that. that's what they are. That, um, this is sort of what modern finance teaches us is that we should lower the volatility in our portfolio. And, we, and, and the hope is we raise our risk-adjusted returns, but in so doing, um, we're actually making ourselves poorer. Um, we sort of, so risk mitigation is, has sort of turned into this thing that has a, a cost to it. It doesn't have to be there that way. It shouldn't be. The goal of risk mitigation, like the goal of investing, should be to raise our rate of compounding and thus raise our wealth, or else it begs the question, why do we do it? Fair point. Mark, Jeremy Grantham, the famous value investor who specializes in calling market bubbles, told me last month... He often that does. He, <laughs> that, that U.S. equities are in a super bubble, only the fourth in history, and that the bubble is already bursting, and that it's going to end in a 1920 line like crash. Do you agree? Um, I generally do agree. We are clearly in a debt, a super debt cycle. There's no doubt about that. I don't Be agree. Be careful, you might start sounding like Ray Dalio. I don't, I don't agree that there's that we can tactically trade this, that we can time this in any way. I don't agree with that. I mean, I have a, all kinds of respect um, um, for Grant, for Grantham, but at the same time, I think Cassandra's not him, but Cassandra's generally make very poor investors. Um, we end up, it ends up, risk mitigation in that sense ends up being the cure that's worse than the disease. 
days. You can get your risk mitigation right, and it ends up being a, this Pyrrhic victory in that um, the cost, the, the, the toll that it had in your portfolio was greater than um, uh, that, that cost that that, that that risk would have, would have, would have had. So you don't agree with the idea that you can time it, but if you were to look at the market the way that Grantham is looking at it, or perhaps your own way, you see enormous embedded risks. Well, it's 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 enormous, and it's it's. I think that people who, for instance, today when people think that the the Fed is on this great uh, hawkish tightening cycle, I think there's a profound lack of appreciation um, for how dangerous the market is and how embedded all of this liquidity is in the financial system. I mean, we have 30 trillion dollars of, of 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 federal debt right now. I think that needs to be under, well understood. So there you have it, Mark Spitznagel. Uh, you've just learned a little bit more about him. And he's issuing some dire warnings. And you may have picked up there's a strategy or a tool that he uses, and that is options, and that's something we do. I've mentioned on this channel, in fact, I did a scorecard towards the end of 2020 on this channel. I did a video where I shared my scorecard of 2020, and we'd made 780% return in the first quarter. Uh, in fact, we, we made that in two and a half weeks. Now, I use a lot of strategies that Mark uses, not all of them. Uh, the guy is way too brilliant for me, uh, but I do use many of his strategies, but it's more the Austrian economic understanding. We understand you know, the business cycle theory. We understand human action, uh, that the economy is made up of individual human beings making subjective value decisions, not, you know, central bank presses a button and we're all robots and we turn right, okay? And then there's other things like I, like I mentioned before with, you know, time preference uh, and how interest rates work, the boom-bust cycle, all of that um, sort of stuff. And so, yeah, and the other thing that we do, so his portfolio, he makes over 100% annual gains. Now, we don't earn anything like that. But we, in our business, we make a lot more than what the market makes. And if you guys followed my basic strategies, you'd be making 20, 30, 40% a year compounding. What we do is we just make monthly gains and we reinvest those and we just allow for compounding to work. Our strategy is very boring. Most people do not like investing the way we invest because it's boring. It's not sexy. It's not exciting. It's boring. But I tell you what, it compounds extremely well. So for those that want to learn more about using Austrian economics uh, as your foundation for investing, uh, Mark Skousen, who is a uh, Austrian economist, uh, Investing in one lesson. Now, this is a play on uh, the, the the great man himself, Henry Hazlitt, uh, Economics in One Lesson. Uh, this is a very good book, which I do recommend. And also in here, he has a chapter chapter on options. Another great book that uh, Mark wrote, uh, A Viennese Waltz Down Wall Street, uh, Austrian Economics for Investors. Um, yeah, rather than a walk down Wall Street. It's a waltz down Wall Street. Uh, very hard book to find. So if you do find it, uh, get it. So most of you on uh, follow this channel will know Ronnie Stuffele, uh, Austrian School for Investors, Austrian Investing Between Inflation and Deflation. Um, you know these guys are, are gold, are gold guys. They do the annual In Gold We Trust report, which. I haven't yet finished. It's just come out um, in recent weeks. I haven't yet finished reading it all. When I do, I will do a video on that because there's some awesome stuff in there uh, This in this report. But once again, this is a book that uh, came out not too long ago. Uh, once again, I highly recommend it for anyone that wants to understand Austrian investing uh, with investing, Austrian economics with investing. And another one that in fact, I would probably recommend most people start with this book. Uh, if they, first of all, if you are unfamiliar with Austrian economics and you want to learn about Austrian economics, um, send me a message below 
I will give you a list of books that I recommend you start with because there's different books that are more advanced and there's other books that are, are good at giving an introduction into Austrian economics. Um, but this book by Mark Thornton, The Skyscraper Curse and How Austrian Economists Predicted Every Major Economic Crisis of the Last Century. Wouldn't you like to have that kind of foresight to be able to predict every major economic crisis of the last century? Wouldn't Don't you think that would help your investment portfolio, especially uh, that mitigation risk? So this is one that I, I recommend people start with. And here... On the Mises Institute, you can click on books, go to their library, and uh, you'll see that they've got a number of books that you can purchase, uh, but they also have a lot of free free books. So you can download a lot of, if you read eBooks, PDF versions, uh, you can download hundreds, if not thousands of books on Austrian economics uh, and investing here on the Mises Institute. Uh, I also recommend you guys subscribe to their podcast uh, if you guys really want to understand uh, Austrian economics and how it applies to the real world and the real world of investing. So I'll put a link in the description below, but I did this video, my top 10 economic investment and trading books. So if you want to know more about my trading style, where you can make 20, 30, 40% uh, annual returns and uh, you know, understand Austrian economics, uh, then watch this video. Spend a bit of time, just watch this video. My top 10 economic investment and trading books. You also understand um, my uh, option uh, strategy. And then just recently I did this video, my top 10 videos. And seriously, this is, so I've done, I don't know how many videos I've done uh, over the last uh, couple of years, but I put together this video recently, my top 10 videos, that if any person came to my channel and goes, where do I start? Uh, which videos should I watch? I put this video together for them, my top 10 videos, which I think are the most important videos, which give the most amount of valuable education. And so once again, if you haven't watched it, which not many people have, to be honest. It's one of my worst performing videos in terms of views. Uh, same with my top 10 uh, economic uh, finance and trading books. Uh, these are two of my most important videos, yet they're my least watched videos. So uh, check that out. And speaking of options, uh, I did this video. This was a rehash of an old video I did, uh, Become Your Own Central Bank. And in here, I simply teach our... Option strategy, the most basic option strategy. So we we do a number of uh, strategies uh, on both on the buy side of options, but you know you guys will know I sell options predominantly. Uh, so we sell naked puts to enter positions. Uh, we we sell out of the money uh, calls for premiums and take those monthly profits and reinvest them. Uh, we we trade strangles. Um, you know. When it comes to buying, we, we will buy bear call spreads in down markets, put options in down markets, and we'll buy leap options. So just all they basically are is long-term call options on positions that we think uh, you know, th there's going to be a lot of upside, but basically we're, we're buying time to be right. And so in this, but then there's different option strategies which are a little bit more complex, maybe a little bit more risky uh, for the investor who doesn't have a lot of experience. So in this video, I just share the, the, the two most basic uh, option strategies that you know people should start out with. And you know, what I say is people should firstly learn the basics of Austrian economics, then learn the basics of uh, fundamental value investing, and then the basics of option investing. And then what I say is you learn those things and you learn those things by reading and studying and then start to apply it. So, you know, for your first options trade, you might sell a, you might own a, a, a particular stock, you might sell an out of the money covered call, short dated. When we sell options, we do short, short dated options. When we buy options, we were generally buying longer dated options. Um, and just do that with a little bit of capital. And then you'll, you know, learn and 
you'll go, wow, this is actually quite easy. And then you can start doing it with larger bits of capital and so forth. And next minute, you know, you're an options expert and you're making 20, 30, 40% returns annually. And in this video, Wall Street Secrets Revealed, uh, I just shared uh, a, a Wall Street, uh, a very successful Wall Street uh, trader, buddy of mine, who just says, look, this is, this is what we trade over a long period of time, just the basic strategies. And it's a bit like what I just mentioned uh, just before. I also, later in this video, I'll put links in the description to both these videos as well. Uh, later in this video, I talk about um, you know master limits and global limits, debt recycling, that sort of thing. And I'll finish off this video. So I did this uh, a video, Crisis Investing Gold and Silver, Doug Casey, uh, also an Austrian uh, economist, uh, philosopher uh, that uses Austrian economics in his investing approach. Uh, also sells a lot of options. Uh, and in this video, I talked about investing over the business cycle, the Austrian business cycle theory. You'll learn about that if you study Austrian economics. And this is what we do. And that's why as a gold and silver investor, you know, I'm, I'm cool. The, 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 the business cycle hasn't yet played out. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm cool with that. Um, so what I'm going to do is... Uh, uh, some other similar videos like this, uh, educational videos on very successful investors like Mark Spitznagel. Uh, I've got another one that I'm working on with uh, Stan Druckenmiller um, and some investing lessons from Stan and how that applies to today. Uh, Jim Rogers, uh, Jim Rogers, how he uses Austrian economics uh, for his investing. Uh, strategy and these are some of the greatest investors in modern times so uh, you know if you guys want to learn more about how the greats invest what they use their philosophy behind uh, and their strategies behind their investing uh, then definitely give me that thumbs up hit the like button on this video and leave a comment below I want to if you guys want this I want to produce content that is valuable and educational for you guys to help you guys improve as investors um, to protect yourselves and your families uh, from you know crazy central banks and as George Gemmon says big governments um, so yeah let me know in the comments below but as I said if you like this video please hit that thumbs up hit that like button really do appreciate it if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel do so and hit that notification bell Take care, everyone. I'll see you all again on another episode of Finance Uncut.